Welcome to another episode of Captured by Women. I am Sarah Safweje, and I'm joined today by my co-hosts. Angela Dedo Kofi, an entrepreneur with multiple business interests. I'm Elizabeth Olympio Emmanuel, a restaurateur. I'm Nansata Yakubu, a development consultant. Government has carried through on its decision to make the power distribution services company the electricity service provider of Ghana in all ECG's operational areas in the southern distribution zone of Ghana. The deal is said to be ad advantageous to government, partly because the concessionaire, PDS, is responsible for all major new investments. This is expected to help minimize the impacts of such investments on the national budget. But, barely a week into its operations, the power supply situation in Ghana has gone south, earning the company the dubious nickname of proper Dumso or privatized Dumso. What's happening? Have we gone for frying pan to fire? Boeing's new aircraft has only been around for two years and already two 737 MAX 8s have crashed, killing a total of 346 people. Here is a little background of what I'm talking about. The first crash occurred on October 29, 2018, just 12 minutes after an almost brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8 belonging to the Indonesian budget airline took off, killing 189 people. Six months later, on March 10, 2019, another state-of-the-art MAX 8 operated by the Ethiopian Airlines took off from the Addis Ababa airport and crashed to the ground six minutes later, killing 157 people. Some industry experts attribute the disasters to a design flaw that emerged when engineers began cutting corners. With Ethiopian Airlines set to dominate the Ghanaian aviation sector, after signing a deal on December 4, 2018, to establish a new home-based flag carrier for Ghana, is there a cause for alarm? There's no point boring you with data on youth unemployment in Ghana. But growing unemployment situation seems to be a factor in the casual drift from the rather mundane membership of some unemployed association to becoming a political vigilante and enrolling into party-affiliated militia. President Ekufuado has extended an olive branch to both the NPP and NDC parties to disband their affiliated vigilante groups. But will a mere declaration of disbandment cure the underlying motivation for youths seeking to join such groups? Spain is up next when we return from the break. Welcome back from the break. This is The Spin. And this episode, we're coming to you from the showroom of Padoha Exquisite in Adabraka. It's a one-stop shop for all your furniture needs and exquisite interior decor accessories. Ladies, I don't know if you are all affected or any of you are affected by the power outages. I mean, how do you think it's affecting everyone? Well, for me, they couldn't work from the office. And it was during the day, I think it was three days ago. It happened two consecutive times and we don't have a generator. And so once the light goes off during the day, we can't work. Client okay. jobs stop. Were uh, you affected? I think, I think my, in my case, it was a, a night thing. I'm beginning to think there's some sort of con conspiracy. <laughs> if, if you catch my drift, uh, every evening it goes up, comes back, goes up, and then you finally find some space to go to bed, but it's so hot and not everybody aff uh, affords air conditioners, but we have fans, most of us use fans and the fans can't stay on, you open all your windows and still it's so stuffy and so hot, you can't, you can't sleep. So it's really been bad. Been very bad. The past few days it's been so rampant and it comes back with such a surge of power that it blows yes. up equipment. I've lost two freezers, and one air conditioner at work and when the last one went off two days ago was the worst because I have very young children and the fan stays humming gently but it went off and I had to stay up I got home really late then had to stay up the whole night with them because the power didn't come back till 7 past 6 a.m. I was cranky and upset the whole day very bad very bad it's unacceptable like, you know, what okay. for me sorry not to for what is upsetting for me is that we went through all this 
during ECG times. Now we have a new company, company PDS. And um, I don't know about you, but I don't find that they are communicating effectively with the public. They are not giving us planned maintenance schedules. So are we to assume that this is how they are going to continue? I mean, it's, it's just... I, I would say that the, the transition is fraught with a lot of issues. In the first place, a lot of us just heard about the transfer. Yes. It's like so I was the, just watching was the no news post. and heard that there's PDS taking over from ECG. That's just all that I heard. And, and there was no preparation to nothing. Let us know. I were, just heard. Were that. you made aware that um, you have to make all your payments now to PDS? A lot of no, us wrote our no, checks. No, I have no idea. I found out as by surprise because I actually put it on Facebook. I thought, what is happening? At least send us a bulk text message. That is the basic thing you can do when we are applying for our power. You actually put in your name, your text, your mobile number your email address and they have all this information what are they doing with it stored up in a cupboard oh. you need to do constant education constant monitoring and make sure that information is being disseminated we have an information services department exactly. are they going around with the with the land rover and a loudspeaker in the different languages no they are not so that's why there's a, f a flaw from pre-communication to when they took over and what's going to happen next because as of now i don't think we all have a clear picture of what's actually and going customer, to happen customer care. going forward. No, seriously, when you call ECG, the 0302611611, that was ECG. You would get someone picking it up right away. When the power went off at the 1, 1 a.m., 107 a.m., two days ago, I called. No one picked up. They had this jazz instrumental. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy the music. Yeah, well, maybe all their lines were they busy. Didn't pick up. All their lines were busy. That's exactly it what it said. It said all the lines are busy. But then they'll they'll ask you to hold on. I I kept it on for about fifteen minutes. Chop my credit too. A much a much <laughs> more another issue that we need to uh, really look at is the issue of uncertainty. For instance, we've realized that if you buy twenty CDs power for postpaid. Uh, you actually for prepaid be, for prepaid excuse mm -hmm. me you can actually be like a hundred CD consumer because people have realized that there seem to be some poverty uh, economics yeah, around how you much pay, you buy how you how buy much the power yes yeah, so people instead of buying bulk like five hundred a month you buy two hundred you are penalized for buying in bulk even yes. though you consume under and the same go. rate if exactly. you'd like to project yourself to consume for the for the next fifteen days I I spent. One mega, one, yes. one kilowatt power a day. Yes. If I say 15, I'm going to buy the 15. I'm going to be penalized for that 15 because as soon as I buy that power, in this, uh, the tariffs, the higher tariffs kick in place. So my power that I have bought, thinking that I'm buying it for 15 days, becomes enough for seven days because I am being put on the instant high tariffs when you pay. So exactly. people now have to go back and, and forth, forth. Buy, pay for transportation to go and buy that little power so that they my, need the on a daily basis. So the question we are all asking is, it defeats is the PDS purpose. coming to say we are bringing in improved service at a higher tariff or we are going to make the tariff affordable? So people can buy more power. Well, I don't think so. Or, silent on that. Or, we, we haven't as we anything. have seen, if you are starting a journey and you haven't just stumbled, you have fallen. Are we saying that ECG will not even end up being better than PDS? In uh, my, in my in opinion. The f in the or past what's in the days. name? You know, the other, the other time I had a conversation with a friend, we said, what's in the name? Is it just the name change? Shouldn't they have worked for a while? And then when we see the improvement and we say, oh, this is improved, they say, R actually, it's not ECG. We are now PDS. Oh. Because I think sometimes when you announce your... your your arrival, a lot we of things happen. We have expectations. You know? have expectations. If, yeah. if that happened as well, the backlash would probably have been more. No. They've been around for three weeks now. I think they still have time to redeem themselves, oh, to yes. come out and then let us I agree know with yeah. exactly what the plan is. What are they going to do? I think they've do? not come out with What's, a plan. Is, is there going to be a schedule? No. Do we have shortage? What exactly they is the issue? They focus more on the job, obviously the job losses and what they will retain. and They are going to be doing the power distribution, but yes. ECG owns, they still owns their infrastructure. Is ECG not out of the picture entirely? For 20 years, it's going to be they're PDS. They're saying that there's so probably PDS. a so ECG yes, is but ECG out is still, of the picture. No, peace. my understanding is that ECG still owns the infrastructure, the lines, all the, you know, basically. So why is PDS there? PDS is an investor. It's going to 
So it's a supply, it's a service provider, it's a supply. It's here to provide a new improved service of electricity distribution. Well, so far, so far, there's no sabotage from ECV on PDS. That is the ideal. You have to do that. We will. We will as in we have a different. Because we also know that ECG staff are not happy with the whole takeover. At least those who have been affected. It could be sabotage, Sabotage the whole. Well, let, well, let's not pretend that ECG, ECG was any better. <laughs> we were very unhappy with no, ECG. No, but at least we knew ECG. So we, we knew, knew, we knew and, and we wouldn't be surprised. We didn't set a high standard for them. them. <laughs> you know, apart from the November that okay. it was really bad, last year, November, when we, we haven't had, at least Christmas, hey, it wasn't bad. Hey, January, it was... Maybe I'm biased because I haven't suffered any power outages since... Oh, you live with PDS? No, I haven't. You didn't live next door to any of the workers. Osu, we were every single day we had power outages so yeah it's, it's an improvement no it's it, it hasn't improved in the past few days we my business is in east legon and it's been difficult mm. be difficult the power goes two three times in a day and it's unexpected there should be a schedule true same with me in the so office let me ask you all if the service does improve and it maintains a consistent standard would you be happy paying higher tariffs if, we if they were paying, paying higher tariffs? I said, I said, I said, I said, I said it has to be justified. High, if they are higher tariffs. Much no. More no, we don't want, we higher, don't tariffs. want higher tariffs. No, because what is being provided now at these high tariffs is not justified. Exactly. We are not getting said when your equipment blow up. The system is such that it frustrates you no. not to follow through to so get I am compensation. Saying that your equipment blows up presumably because of brownouts and power outages. Yes. If those stop and your equipment does not blow up, yes. would you be no. happy? We are not. The For tariffs the rates we are paying, paying that's what we are expecting. The rates we are currently I, I paying because are on a high exactly. standard. We are not rates so we expect exactly. the service. They need to come up to the standard we are even now paying before we can then have a discussion about Precisely. whether we can increase. What we are paying now, we are not getting it. Ladies, it will take a lot of years to ladies, get there. We are not. ECG, PDS. Well, I think we've done justice to the toll this power problem is taken on us, the regular people, and our businesses. We should hear the insider perspectives of the people taxed with the responsibility of making sure this problem goes away. We hear from an expert right after this break. Our beautiful, gorgeous outfits are by the kind courtesy of GTP, made in Ghana, and designed by Nanadra of Timashe, located in East Legon, Accra. Oh, 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 my name is Elizabeth, and this is Captured by Women. Let's face it, life is a lot harder without electricity. Not all of us have the money to invest in solar power and all those other alternatives. But we pay our bills on time just so we can have the lights come on when we need it. Is that too much to ask? Joining us today on Captured by Women is Migdad Mohammed, a research and policy analyst at the Institute for Energy Security, IES. Sir, welcome to Captured by Women. Well, well thank you. So, Migdad, what is the current state of affairs? Why the frequent interruptions in power supply? Well, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, humbled to be in the midst of four powerful women. <laughs> There's a maintenance by PDS, as we are all aware. They announce it via their social media handles and their official websites and through media that they have some uh, specific maintenance Where programs. Where PDS is? The Power the Distribution Services. That is the successor to ECG. Okay. They took over ECG on the 27th of February. 27th February? February. So they, they are three okay. weeks old in managing ECG. All right. And uh, they are continuing the maintenance programs of ECG. So in the midst of that maintenance, a great co-developed uh, some faults with some of their transmission lines. Uh, particularly one, the most popular one has to do with the Pokwas interchange. I think a 330 kV uh, transmitter that has to be uh, removed so that they can have uh, power uh, transmitted across to from Abuaze. So some parts of Accra was affected, some parts of the central region was affected. And I think uh, we are all aware equally that uh, Gridco has come out to uh, take responsibility, responsibility for for, uh, for, for, for the okay, so it's not a cover up. The, that is the the, the, the 
This yeah. is where we have okay. a problem. For the normal, average Ghanaian, mm. all what we are saying is a bit above our head. Mm. We just know that ECG is supposed to give us power. Now PDS. So now that is PDS. With ECG, it was the tag of Doomsop. <laughs> With PDS, unfortunately or fortunately, they have a D in their name. <laughs> so now I guess it's persistent Doomsop services. That's what it's going to be. Because a lot of people are saying if a new partner is coming on board and it's coming to exacerbate what the old partnership meant, then that means that we neither move forward or made progress. Mm. The main problem here is with these outages, a lot of appliances are going bust. Mm. Personally, I can't charge any of my appliances in my house. Mm. My TV works for a point, goes off. I can't charge my phone. Mm. I had to use uh, laptops to, to try to show our battery. My bulbs are going off. Fridges won't come on and stuff like that. So legally, who pays for that? Well, I, I know f uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate that uh, PDS is taking over from an institution like ECG with a very terrible reputation. And it's beginning on this very sad note. Because they are not, in my opinion, they shouldn't be uh, investing in only the operational and technical turnaround of ECG. They should also be uh, conquering the psychology of incompetence and inefficiency, which the public associates with, uh, with ECG. So on your appliance uh, challenges, I know the PURC has a complaint unit under, uh, they, they have a public consumer complaint unit where if you have very documented instances where particular outages has come in, in a manner which is not because uh, your prepaid meter ran out or because you had a local outage that has to do with your uh, force major, uh, force major being maybe a thunder that struck and caused some problems. They will, they will look into it and, 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 and properly compensate you where uh, the lines of, of force are clearly established. But over the period, because a lot of Ghanaians are not aware of this opportunity, I think that, that's uh, even on their websites. No, we are, we are aware. No, I, I am a first hand. Exactly. I tried. And it, yeah. it does not work as simply as you've well, put it. Uh, even, Pro even proving, beyond... proving the outage is the mm. difficulty. Proving the outage. Yes. Proving the outage. And then you have to become combative with ECG because mm -hmm. they'll tell you it's your appliance that is faulty. Mm -hmm. Unless your appliance is brand new under warranty, they're going to say that you haven't earthed. It's a whole thing. So yes. I'm sorry so to say that they use ECG has used fine print. So, yes. uh, that, 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 that's, then there's an, uh, a problem here then that I think mm -hmm. we have to all look at. Which hopefully PDS will not come and repeat the mistakes of ECG. Uh, you see, uh, no. one, of the, one of the headaches that uh, <laughs> PDS will have to deal with now is when they make the investments they are supposed to make, and they are going to make about, I think, $500 million investment per year for the next five years. When they make that oh, investment... Oh, it's $500 million per year, not for the no, entire five... for the entire five years. Uh -huh. So 100, so 100 million, million spread out for the five years. Okay. And the system efficiency improves. They will have still had that reputation of having introduced themselves uh, into the system with a lot of... Uh, questions that such that acronyms have emerged from social media yeah. and all of that in the, so they have a lot of work to do in the power chain supply we have the independent power suppliers we have vra which is mm. the state uh, and generator the state producer all together they produce well over 3000 megawatts mm. of power what mm. is the is ghana's need nationwide for power peak and low peak high peak low peak I know, as at yesterday, yes. the peak uh, power for the country is about 2,613 megawatts. Okay. Uh, and as you rightly mentioned, we have over-installed capacity. Is Great Co transmitting this amount of power? Because when they say that we have to have load shedding, mm -hmm. what is the reason for load shedding if there's so much power being generated? Uh, well, it, it happens when uh, the peak has been reached, you have generated the power but the demand is not there. So if you observe, uh, ECG has a program they call intensification program. That program is rolling on more people onto the grid so that when the power is generated, they will have use have for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the power purchase agreements we sign with some of the independent power producers is take or pay. Yes. And they sign these things to protect themselves. You say you want power. Okay, I have brought my power plant. But, but wait a I'm minute. generating it. We have communities that do not have electricity as yet. Oh, yes. Uh, so how will there be an overspill of power that does 
no need for it. It's because it has to be shed somewhere. Because there has to be the inf infrastructure available to transmit okay. those powers uh, to so those PDS communities. So PDS is going to put in that infrastructure. That is Great Coast. That is Great Coast responsibility. But they'll be partnering with uh, part of the turnaround programs for uh, PDS includes a partnership with Gridco to uh, make sure that they have. Okay, so simple question: Where are we off? That's all people need to know. Well, Where uh, are we off on off on uh, uh, Doom Soft Phase Two? Off on off on. Uh, like she mentioned, uh, she asked a question uh, about whether we are giving the benefit of the full picture. If you observe in November, December, we had the same, uh, if I can use the word crisis for it. And that and was are, before PDS that came. That was before yes, PDS yes. came. And we were told that it was because of a technical uh, problem, gas supply at Abuazi and all of that, which my institute disputed because we had the benefit of some uh, information that we think that it has been managed. Uh, at that point, we, were, we thought that uh, the managers of the industry will have been, uh, they, are, they will have done well for themselves to come and tell people the truth. And that the problem actually is a problem of money. Aside the fact that, yes, uh, this is not the first time that uh, we have had uh, uh, power trips or yeah. we, are, we are going to relocate one transmission line from one point to the other. And where you are doing that, your engineers have a fair idea of how long it will last. And they will communicate it to all the players in their power chain, particularly when it was CCG, they will communicate it to the distributor because they are the, uh, they are the distributing end to the power uh, for uh, consumers at the domestic and re residential uses. So, so, so by this, are you confirming that what Gridco coming out to say that um, it is their fault, you agree to that? Is that what you're oh, saying? Because you said in December, you came out to say that um, you didn't agree to what they were saying. Yes. It, for example, if it is Pokwasi, what about Bolga that slept in darkness for uh, almost 18 hours? Is, is Bolga connected to Pokwasi? That is one of the questions that we should ask. Only that we have followed the industry. We know that two days ago, parts of Tamale slept in darkness mm -hmm. because of a grid co challenge. So you can't always manage the information and drop it on Pukwase as the scapegoat. Okay. So, in so all clearly there is a problem. And one other thing that has compounded the doom so, doom so is PDS. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Power disruption. Eh? Uh, it is PDS on maintenance uh, shadows. You know, ECG normally does their maintenance spread out so okay. that they don't concentrate it across the country at a point. But I don't know the plan of uh, PDS. I think I want to believe that they want to do all the maintenance within a month and move on to something else. So shouldn't the, they be the given us a schedule for maintenance as we are consumers and we are partners? We have signed contracts with them. I, they, like, like, I've seen shadows. The problem with I even the it. shadows is that. No, I mean the shadows of the outage that, okay, Jashi uh, Pramso in Kumaso go off, Kofru will go off, this area will go off. The problem with that shadow itself, and it is not good for the image of PDS, given the image of its uh, uh, predecessor, is that you don't give a shadow you can't meet. Yes. It's better for you to say that the lights will be off in 48 hours, and then in 8 hours you bring it back, so that you surprise people and to say that, okay, I'm taking it off to do some maintenance uh, between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., and people sleep for 24 hours in darkness. Because they lose I mean, confidence. It, even beyond, I mean, the issue of appliances, etc. And mm -hmm. um, what happens to the food that gets spoiled in people's fridges? And there are things that um, we should actually talk about as well because or medicines. Yeah, I, I think medicines, medication, medication. Hospitals. What, what mm -hmm. happens to those things? Can you legally go and say, as consumer what rights, well, what, uh, can, what action as consumers can we take? for compensation because a lot is happening, a lot of damage is being incurred. Uh, it is one of the things that uh, I will be prompting my colleague uh, Kofi Capito, the Consumer Protection Agency, yes. to yes. take a look at. Yes. And my counterpart, uh, Duncan at COPEC, uh, they are consumer-based consumer, consumer -based, uh, organizations. They, but I believe that uh, you even prompted me about the inefficiency of the PURC consumer complaint uh, yes. system. And as stakeholders, so we, 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 yeah. we would have to uh, prompt them and look at it because when people lose hope in the system, it comes back to bite all of us. Uh, when people lose hope in the uh, ability of PDS to deliver, even after the investment we foresee them making, yeah. and people still think that it is not enough. When it comes to issues of issue of tariff, which will come to uh -huh. someday as they go, because they can't continue to do what ECG was because doing. Because presently with ECG, you cannot determine how much one kilowatt of power costs now. Before we went to the prepaid mm -hmm. metering system, you could actually calculate on your billing what you receive. Yes. But now you don't get bills. You go pay with a, um, uh, your, you pay and you get a text message back. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't tell you because sometimes when you buy, you choose to 
estimate how much power yeah. you'll need for yes. a month or two weeks, you actually get penalized because if yes. you choose to pay for the whole month in advance, you are placed on a higher tariff of consumption. Yeah, they have a brackets. So, yes, yeah. and that is very, that is the negative. High, the higher tariff, it, it exists even the postpaid. It's always existed. It, the higher no, the, the more you buy, the, the more higher you, you buy, pay. The, the higher right? you yes. pay. Yes. But if with the... And it's because of where tax, the taxes are yeah. progressive. So but it means it's that as so you, you pay that as, pay you, as so you go, it shouldn't be yeah. heavy users. No, it's, 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 it's so when you buy fifty per two weeks, I choose to, if I consume. Yeah. So BDS has a lot of work to do. Speaking of having a lot of work, do you think their reputation has suffered from this initial mishaps? And secondly, mm. are they likely to increase prices? With all this, this is a huge investment yes. in the infrastructure they are going to make. So it is one of the questions that the managers of the system are avoiding. When we, during the takeover, we were pushing for a discussion on tariff, not just about job losses, because generally people will be concerned about job losses. A new manager is coming, are people losing their jobs? But what about tariff? And so far, they have shied away from the discussion, but it is an important discussion we must have. And if we must have it, the truth is that we have to pay more for power going forward. But if because we pay more, then we demand a better service. As, uh, uh, that is uh, why I say PDS has a lot of work to do. Okay. With this reputation, if a demand for increment in tariff comes, uh, I don't know how. Be, I am I, definitely going to pick it. I don't know how. I don't know how the public will receive it. <laughs> I will receive when it they are, kindly because the they are subjecting are the name of PDS high. to a lot of uh, 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 social the media mockery and PDS. All Mr. That Mr. John Amewu, Peter Amewu came out um, to say the problems would be resolved in five days. Yes, the same Amewu was uh, two weeks ago applauding himself for solving doom. So that is just to uh, clarify. So it means we still have so, some you know, it uncertainties means We have some uncertainties. Uh, because uh, uh, he had a meet the press two weeks ago and he yeah. said that uh, Ghanaian should applaud him for uh, solving doom. So. And I saw that he couldn't have done that because he can't, you can't write an exam and mark yourself and give yourself an A when the Ghanaian people who should be doing the marking uh, have not spoken yet. And now we are speaking about the problems we have seen with PDS. Mr. McDad, Mohammed, it's been a pleasure having you on Captured by Women. <laughs> Obviously, the problems are multifaceted, and as you yes. mentioned in the beginning. We hope we can find solutions soon, else the consumers are more discerning day by day. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, I, Thank you. I, I, I'm free. <laughs> 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 we'll be back from the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is Captured by Women. I am Nansata Yakubu. Here is a little background. In October 2018, Lion Air, belonging to an Indonesian budget airline, crashed off the coast of Java carrying 189 people. This was a Boeing 737 MAX 8. And on March 10th this year, we had another crash from Ethiopian airline flying from Addis Ababa, Boli International, to Nairobi. What has this done to our confidence in air travel? We have with us today Air Commodore Kwame Kranchi Pumpuni, retired, former Chief of Staff, Ghana Air Force, and former Managing Director of Ghana Airways. You are welcome to the program, Air Commodore Pumpuni. Thank you very much. Air Commodore, for Ghana, we have just expanded our airports to accommodate larger planes, and everybody's excited, especially about the new Terminal 3. But with the news of the crash from the Ethiopian, a partner that we are looking forward to for a new national carrier, mm -hmm. what is your take on the way forward for future developments with the Ethiopian airline? Thank you very much for this question. Uh, just one flight going off the air should not scare us from continuing flying. <laughs> uh, if you look at, say, the European air, every day you have over 5,000 to 10,000 flights all in the air, and yet we don't hear anything. It shows how serious we are with safety on the aircraft. We should wait for what the black box will tell us as to the real cause of this accident. And then we learn from that. Uh, so we should not be scared 
we should continue flying. But at the same time, uh, Air Commodore, I think one flight is one too many. And uh, if you look at our neighbors next door, Nigeria, I think we can say one flight. Mm -hmm. And even on our, in uh, the same airspace, we've also had Kenyan Airways mm -hmm. also crashing over Cameroon a couple of years, I mean a few years, a few yes. years back. And Ethiopian itself mm -hmm. has been hit with a lot of uh, issues, mm -hmm. bordering on maintenance mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah. And in Ghana, we've had local incidences. Yes. You know, yeah. shooting over the runway, the yeah. one at yeah. Elwak. So, shooting, yeah. what does that do to air travel, the confidence in air travel generally for the average Ghanaian? Well, the average Ghanaian, if it's not the question of cost, I think a lot of people would like to fly, despite all these incidents. The cost involved in purchasing a ticket to go wherever you want to go scares a lot of us. If you like to put up a, a question to the general population as to how many people would like to fly in spite of all these incidents. But uh, from my own experience, yes, these incidents have happened, but they are bound to happen in the sense that it's an equipment, it's engineering that we are using, and a lot of things will not give you a warning before it comes on. That particular aircraft, which was involved in an accident uh, a few days ago, had perfectly flown from South Africa to Addis Ababa that morning. Nothing happened. Their second leg was to come from there to uh, Nairobi. Nairobi, and the incident happens. So what would you read into this? Well, that, I'd like to ask, yes. there's been a lot of speculation, and there have been some countries have actually grounded the aircraft and forbidden them from coming through their fly In fact, zones. All, 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 that, of them. all that aircraft now, have been grounded yes. now. Yesterday. now. But yeah. you made an interesting point in that that same aircraft flew successfully from South Africa. Yes. Now, we all know, I mean, if you followed air travel, there will be a change of crew. Yes. Is there any possibility, without accusing these deceased pilots, yeah. that there might have been a lack of experience, might have played a part, or what other causes can you think of that well, may have led to this? Well, two causes. Yes, you might say that the two captains are different. Yes. And one might have more experience than the other one. And again, the equipment itself might have developed. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. So as it continues flying from there, a hitch can also happen. So these are the two courses. But Otherwise, before, before, the, before the plane takes off, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are safety checks yes, yes. Um, that are supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. If it came from South Africa, mm -hmm. I'm sure yes. that there should have been safety checks. And if there was an issue, then yes. they could have realized that and yes. probably addressed it. So yes. are there safety checks that weren't done? Or if it's flying probably midway, that doesn't happen. Could there be any possibility like I that? I expect that some servicing would have to be done after each leg okay. and then certified mm -hmm. on what we call a, a, a servicing book with the various engineers in various parts of the aircraft who are specialized on various parts of the aircraft or signing as having checked their areas yeah. of their specialty in other words radio chaps who check the radios and serviceable he signs that he has checked that in serviceable time and everything. The engine, the engine man will check the same. The airframe will check the same. Avionics will check the same. And it's sign been, this. It's been 48 yes. hours since the black box was found. Yes. How long does it take for the information on the black box, in to the black out. box, to, to come, come out, out? To be interpreted, to find exactly what transpired the last few minutes before the plane went down? Yes. Well, I don't know where they're sending it to, whether they're sending it to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to have that interpretation done, or whether uh, it's going to Europe to have it done. Okay. But I guess it might go to U.S. Right. to have it done. So after they recover the, the black boxes, it will have to be sent down, and there uh, should be a represent, represent, representation of various uh, interest groups present. present when it's open and it's okay. interpreted. Yeah, but then at the same yeah. time, the Boeing itself mm -hmm. has grounded the global fleet. 
371. Yes. And they've also recognized that there's a correlation between the two crashes, yes. both the Indonesian and the Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. So what's the liability for them as an organization? Mm -hmm. That well, comes it's, out it's to say huge, that, huge that this is what it is. It's yeah. a huge liability for them. Now, in fact, they have, apart from the 370 that is there, which have been grounded, I think there is an order for almost 5,000 yes. of it. Oh, wow. And they've which gone, to, they've gone to various stages of building those aircraft to, to the specifications of the various airlines that want the aircraft. And payments and so on would have been hmm. done. Part payments would have been done towards this. And therefore, if the airlines are not getting the equipment as promised, yeah. then they will also look at this. So it's going to be a huge liability on Boeing. So in this case, is there an obligation for the passenger? So for instance, uh, well, I'm sitting here, so I can't use myself, but mm -hmm. if somebody crashed mm -hmm. on Ethiopian mm -hmm. and uh, would be set to receive, let's say, compensation from Ethiopian, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the carrier, the, the person who made the aircraft, mm -hmm. also claims liability. So do you double claim? You claim from Ethiopian, you, you the, claim from... You, the from, passenger. You, yeah, yeah. How, does the, how does it affect... Or Ethiopian no. claim from the... I, I can't the, see the, the passenger <laughs> claiming no, anything from, from Boeing. Uh, this. Boeing. Well, yeah. yes. Ethiopian the, and Ethiopia is the, the one that you, you, you have your uh, agreement with. Yes. Insurance agreement is with the Ethiopia. Transportation, yeah. So yes. there's no liability in a third way because... No. If, if they come out to say that we caused it because uh, there's some, some reading mm -hmm. that couldn't happen... Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't no, go. Okay. No, and then no. also explain to us, whilst they have grounded the global fleet, mm -hmm. you still find countries coming out to say, we have also grounded oh, yes. the, the, the fleet. W what's the difference in that? Because if they have grounded all the fleet, mm -hmm. why are countries still coming out to say, we have grounded 371 months? I think, the, I think the countries now, grounded think before countries Boeing before grounded yes. came out with it. Most, yeah. most of the airlines that were operating them in China, yes. in uh, Europe, and Canada, and then Canada all Japan. grounded theirs before, before Boeing, Boeing. Boeing itself came up. Okay. Now that Boeing has said ground every aircraft, and it then goes it closes everybody. Yes. You don't fly it at all. In light and of no this, country will accept you flying in the, into yeah, their into country their either. Space. Yeah. Yes. In light of this, um, considering the fact that the government of Ghana signed a deal with Ethiopia. um, Ethiopian Airlines to establish our home base mm -hmm. carrier, mm -hmm. What should be governments take? What should they consider going forward, mm -hmm. especially if Ethiopian Airlines mm -hmm. has this fleet? How would it affect this deal? Well, once the fleet or the aircraft is cleared after uh, the modifications and so mm -hmm. have been done, then we have no cause to worry again. And when the modifications is done, then these are passed on to all those aircraft that are already in the uh, online that do such and such modifications by this, di this time after which you can then fly. Okay. So, we so, so Boeing will come out with a modification kit and all those uh, airlines, companies that operate that aircraft will purchase the, the, the modification and then implement them on the aircraft. Oh, there won't be a recall to Boeing. They would have to, the countries would have to do this themselves. Yes, they will have to purchase the modification that has been specified by Boeing and incorporate it into in this. Boeing will arrange with them as to how, how, how to pay how for it or not. You know, but at this having, point in time, uh, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, I don't believe we are expecting any 737s to fly into Ghana no. anytime soon. Until until the, the ban is lifted. But I was looking can. at the countries that own operate three. It's, it's quite limited. China only has three. Japan has three. Has the entire three. Yes. 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 So yes. yes. We just don't let them bring seven three sevens together. No. I think we should. In fact, yeah. that is not the only aircraft that have had accidents. <laughs> well, for there now, that's so the one. That's that's that is the one that is. Yes. Uh, would, but would, we should yeah. we should trust that. When the writing has been done and the modifications have been done Things and cleared and certified, then it is safe to fly. Otherwise, for instance, the U.S. will not allow it to fly from the U.S. Okay. To come here. Mm -hmm. are, are you and comfortable with the new system that they have in place, which is probably a bit more digital than the old airlines? Because that's what's attributed to the course. That's what we're hearing. 
What's your take on that? Well, it's all a question of uh, learning whatever Technology. people Technology, yeah. Okay. Each of the crew will have to go to school on that completely and certify that he has gone and passed <laughs> and then cleared as having passed on that aircraft. Okay. So as soon as the modification is finished, various steps will be given as to what they should proceed, and each crew will have to go through that yeah. before it's certified that you can then go. Yes. As a frequent yes. flyer, I, I, I presume we should all take travel insurance when we are boarding a flight. Well, it's always normal to have that. Not everybody takes travel no. insurance. Yes, yes. You it's buy normal. a ticket or you normal. jump yes. on board and but you go. But for now, you should check and make sure it's insurance is The important. travel insurance, they don't yes. take it as life insurance. They mostly take it for, for delays, baggage, for baggage, for, baggage, yeah. for medical. Well, I think I we mean, should add life insurance. A lot of you have different philosophy. philosophy. Well, some yeah. of us will not fly anymore. In their case, if you die, you die. Some of you have not flown even. They don't want to fly. All die. I know, I know. That's the way you are going, you are going. It's better to go that way than in a trotter in any case. So yes, that's why. Yeah. It, it's I, safer than trotter. Yes. I, why is it For <laughs> over 10 years, I never drove from here to Kumasi, Accra, to Kumasi, even though uh, her family is there and I've been going. Every time I flew, any time I took a car, driving myself down, I get scared on the road. Oh, that's the I get scared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are pilots. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so I believe <laughs> that aircraft is like a yes. car to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe. I, I believe there are more the for us. in brackets yeah. crazy people yeah. on the road than you have in the air. The yeah. old pilot that might behave a little uh, abnormal. That's the only one. But here there are so many of them. Look at the trotter. The way they cross over there, and you can crash and kill yourself too. Look at the road accidents. The number. And the type of injuries you get, if you, even if you don't die, you, your hand is broken and you are stuck in the same <laughs> distance. So it's, 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 it's safer to fly. I think if you have assured you us that yes. it we is are safe to fly. It is, it I'm is. still not com you. completely convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Air Commodore, thank you so much for thank coming on much. Captured by Women. Okay. We'll be right back after the break. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you on this episode of Captured by Women. If you've enjoyed this program, make sure to let us know on our social media platforms and make a date with us same time next week on Captured by Women.